While in prison, it's really easy to forget about the world outside, especially when you're getting that message of that's the way to serve time from so many people in prison. But if you want to succeed when you get out of prison, you really need to be thinking differently. And that's what this video you're going to see is going to talk about, about how people think differently. And I just saw this report on PBS about the Pell Grant coming back to become available to people in prison starting next summer. So that would be the summer of 2023. And I'm really excited about this because I personally benefited from having the Pell Grant available to me when I started my prison sentence. It really transformed my life. And I'm gonna spend my time helping other people who are justice impacted or going into the criminal justice system to understand why the Pell Grant opens an opportunity to really transform their life and get them ready for a more meaningful life after prison. Sometimes, and in some cases, it could even result in a lower sentence. So let's watch this episode on PBS, and then I'm gonna give a little bit of follow-up to tell you about my experiences with a Pell Grant. Many American colleges are gearing up for a spike of interest in prison education programs. That's because incarcerated people will be eligible for Pell Grants starting next summer. It'll be the first time in 28 years that prisoners can access that federal funding for higher education. Stephanie Sy has this report for our series, Rethinking College. Pedro Rivera is a senior at Pitzer, a private college in Claremont, California, with a picturesque campus that Rivera has never stepped foot on. It's not easy. Like, I put in the work and I obsess over the details and I prepare. He's earning his degree while in a medium security prison, the California Rehabilitation Center, more than 20 miles away. I was convicted of multiple counts of bank robbery from incidents that happened in 2005. Rivera has been incarcerated for 16 years. A few years ago, he was watching PBS when his ears perked up. It was a PBS series called College prison. Behind Bars, featuring Bard College's prison it's initiative in New York now. State. More than anything, after watching this program, that's what I wanted. Like, I signed up for everything I could, and finally someone saw something in me that I didn't see in myself, and they was like, uh, we're going to give you this opportunity. That's the, that's the bigger issue. Exactly. 43-year-old right? Rivera is now just a few classes away from his bachelor's degree. He's part of a pioneering program that brings students inside prison together with students from the outside. Faculty, Professor are, Nigel Boyle there. runs the program. Outside students, traditional students, will learn more from a class taught in, inside prison than they would in that, the same class taught uh, uh, conventionally. And similarly, the inside students will learn uh, an awful lot. And it's this learning across often generational difference, as well as obviously the difference in legal status, uh, that is very powerful. The inmates pursuing higher education here get to live in a dedicated section of the facility, the prison equivalent of a college dorm, where there's an exchange of ideas and a common scholastic pursuit. Section 308 is a special place. Textbooks and school supplies litter the bunks. About 48 incarcerated men here are enrolled in higher education courses. We have students in this classroom that are part of the... That number may be about to balloon. For decades, Pell Grants, federal financial aid to help low-income students pay for college, were off-limits for incarcerated men and women. It was a vestige of the controversial crime bill, sponsored by then-Senator Joe Biden and signed by President Clinton in 1994. But that ban is being lifted next year. The reintroduction of federal student aid through Pell Grants is going to be transformative. Margaret DeZerica is a researcher at the Vera Institute of Justice. With the new law, all people in prison are going to be eligible for Pell, regardless of the conviction type or sentence length, which is huge. In the criminal justice reform field, we rarely see this type of victory that is inclusive of everybody who's incarcerated. Some half a million incarcerated people will be able to apply for a Pell Grant next year, aid that will allow them to earn a college degree before being released from a prison like this. Research by the Rand Corporation has shown that providing prison education reduces recidivism by 43 percent. And Desariga says it also addresses deeper inequities. 
There's so many reasons that these college programs are important. There's a very strong argument to be made for racial disparities in terms of who is impacted by the justice system, who is left behind from our education system. One of those left behind was Kenny Butler. He describes middle school in Watts when he was a kid. It was a, you know, a gang factory pretty much. You know, they had the LAP there on campus. At, in a middle school, which was unheard of before, but they actually had the LAPD at this campus. Jumped by a gang when he was only 10 years old, the script was written for him. A lot of people are forced to be a part of the gang. They may not want to, but you get jumped on enough times, you're going to be looking for protection from somewhere. He was 12 when he first went to jail. In June of last year, at 48, he was released early from the California Rehabilitation Center, having spent 15 years in prison for the charge of aiding and abetting homicide. Reading was the way to break up that time, break up the monotony of prison. And so I just fell in love with it, start studying etymology and realizing the origins of words and things like that. Butler became a standout scholar, earning his associate's degree from Norco College and graduating from Pitzer with his bachelor's degree. He was one of the first inside out students. A lot of us doubt ourselves in that space, you know, if we're really educated or not. And so to sit inside a classroom with, you know, with liberal arts professors and, and students from around the world, and it's just, it does something for you. You know, it builds confidence in yourself. And so that's the difference, I believe. He recently won a prestigious Fulbright scholarship for research on a Ugandan prison. He's never been out of the country. Prison administrators say stories like Kenny's prove what incarcerated people are capable of, if given the chance. All of a sudden you learn that skill and you could catapult forward. Shannon Swain runs the education department in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation Office. Correctional education is transformative and higher correctional education is, it's mind-boggling what you see in the classroom. So I believe correctional education is a, a big key component to public safety. With Pell Grant money becoming available, colleges around the country are expected to pounce. Nigel Boyle says that can create a quality control problem. There's more to a college education than just accumulating X amount of credit. So I think we have a concern that academic standards are upheld and this is high quality bachelor's education that inside students are receiving. So how did this make sense to you? Oh, so we get a system based off the story. If done right, a higher education is the best chance at rehabilitation, says Warden Glenn Pratt. Some people might say this is a prison. Uh, it's supposed to be about punishment. Why should they get access to educational opportunities? The reality is uh, these people, these men here at CRC are going to be our neighbors, and we have to provide them successful tools to be productive citizens when they're released. For most of my life, I've mostly just been around people with really similar experiences to me. Pitzer's sophomore, Jack, who for safety is allowed to use only his first name, was impressed. It was his first time setting foot in a prison. It, it puts me out of my comfort zone. Like, I, I mean, nobody likes to think about like systems of inherent injustice. Being here and hearing different points of view is really impactful to me. It's about bringing the community inside these closed institutions, right? Equally. And equality is a big thing. So no one's response to a question is more important than the next person's. We all respect each other in that space shared respect, and for Pedro Rivera, an opportunity to earn more than just a degree. Prior to coming to prison and winding up in this situation in, in my life, I've dishonored myself and I've dishonored my family. And this is how, um, this is how I see I can bring honor back to my name. A name like those of many other inmates nationwide that will soon be written on a college diploma. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Stephanie Sai, reporting from the California Rehabilitation Center in Norco, California. I remember when I started inside of the penitentiary in Atlanta and the Pell Grant was still available. That was back in 1987 or 1988. It was just before they stopped it. And they, just like those people described in the video that, that we just heard, 
I really wanted to get an education while I was in prison. I hated being incarcerated and I just did, I knew that there wasn't anything I could do to control my time in prison. But what I could do was think about, okay, what's going to differentiate me from other people? What's going to show that I'm making a commitment to reconciling with society and leading a law-abiding life when I came upon release? What what resources could I create or tools or tactics could I create to, to persuade other people to believe in me and help me build another life? This is something that I want you to be thinking about if you are inside of a jail or a prison and you're going inside of there and you're thinking about, well, I hate being here, but what am I doing to really transform my life? These are questions that every individual should be asking. And just like we saw from those people who are in California that are getting degrees and working toward degrees right now, you could potentially be doing the same thing. Even if college isn't available in the prison where you are, like college wasn't available to me in the penitentiary when I started, but I knew the Pell Grant was available to me. So I simply wrote letters to universities, to hundreds of universities, letting them know very simply why I wanted their help in, in preparing myself for success. If you're in prison, you should never be afraid of asking for help. So I would go write letters to universities, and I had to write a lot of letters before I got a response. But I would basically just say I'm serving a 45-year sentence. I made really bad decisions when I was in prison, before I went to prison, and now I want to change my life. And if you send another letter, enough letters like that, they, you, you might develop an interest. I said that I want to change my life and education can help me. Will there be opportunities for me to study at this, at this university? And it was through those efforts that I opened opportunities to get an undergraduate degree. It's what I want you to be thinking about right now. What can you do to differentiate yourself? Even if there wasn't school available, and even if there's not school available where you are right now, what you can do is you could start learning on your own. You could learn how to develop your vocabulary. You could learn how to develop your writing skills. You could learn how to develop your um, persuasive skills or um, storytelling skills just by writing about the environment around you. But if the opportunity presents itself for you to get a Pell Grant and earn an academic credential, that can really change the trajectory of your life. It can persuade employers to see you as something different from the criminal path. It can persuade employers to see you differently because they're, they can recognize how hard it is to get a college education for people who are not in prison. But if you're in prison, it's even harder. And it gives you some type of validation that shows you have the, you know, the persistence, the perseverance that is necessary for success. So I was really encouraged to see this uh, video report about Pell Grants coming back for people in prison. It changed my life. I, it allowed me to make myself feel like I was a student instead of a person serving a 45-year sentence. It allowed me to earn a degree, which I could later leverage to get into graduate school and earn a master's degree. It allowed me then to persuade publishers to come into my life and open publishing opportunities for me. It allowed me to persuade Carol to marry me inside of a federal prison because I could show her that, yes, I made some really bad decisions as a young man, but what I've done since I've been in prison, I hope, shows that I want to live as a law-abiding, contributing citizen. And that is what developed our friendship, which later developed a romance and led us to get married inside of a federal prison when I had 16 years of prison behind me and 10 more years of prison ahead of me. So it's my hope that you will find the inspiration to get into college or higher education to educate yourself and to start building a story that you can use on the other side of this journey so that you could transition into society successfully. My name is Michael Santos. I am with Prison Professors and deeply committed to trying to help people in prison prepare for law-abiding, contributing lives. I hope that you will visit us at Prison Professors and get access to the courses that we send into jails and prisons every day. We believe in you.